Do you realize how much freedom Tyler gives you? He works for a big company and earns $5,000 a month. You are supposed to be at home and supporting your husband who is doing the hard work and protecting the family. And yet, no matter how much I tell you, you keep getting cocky like that. I've had enough of this. You and Tyler need to get a divorce. With those words, my mother-in-law pulled out the divorce papers from the drawer. My name is Mona, a 34-year-old office worker. My husband Tyler and I had been married for five years. We had been living happily since we got married. But our relationship started to fall apart because of one thing. That trigger was my mother-in-law. My husband and I originally lived together in a rented apartment. However, about two years ago, my father-in-law passed away due to illness. My mother-in-law, who was now alone, began to push us to live with her. To be honest, I was against the idea of moving in together. I wanted to enjoy my time as a couple. And if we were to live together, I would have to live at my parents in Lowe's house. I was very happy with the apartment I was renting, and I did not want to move. However, my mother-in-law started coming to our house repeatedly after she started saying that she wanted to live with us. At first, my husband said, You're fine on your own, aren't you? You're still young and healthy. But when she kept coming over and over again, it became a hassle. Hey Mona, my mom has insisted so much, so I'm thinking of moving in with her. Tyler had started to give in to her pushiness. As a result, it became two against one, and I had no choice but to agree to live with her. So this is how it started. Living at my in-laws, it was the beginning of hell. My mother-in-law is a very old-fashioned person, and she didn't like the fact that I, her daughter-in-law, was working. Why does Tyler come home before you? Normally, a wife cooks dinner and welcomes her husband, right? You are a lousy wife to work for money to have fun and neglect the housework. My mother-in-law says so and blames me for it every day. I don't work for money to play. I work for money to live. I told her so, but she did not listen to me at all. It's no use trying to deceive me like that. Tyler's earnings are enough for us, so you should quit your job. That's how my mother-in-law told me to quit my job. Stop it, mom. Mono is working for our family. Don't tell her to limit herself like that. But, but, my husband comes in to protect me. Whenever my mother-in-law blames me, my mother-in-law is at a loss for worse when my husband, her only son, talks back to her. It's like she doesn't want to fight with her precious son. It seems that you have brainwashed him. So I will have to break that brainwashing someday. My mother-in-law says that to me when my husband is not around. I don't know if she just wants to bully me or if she has her head stuck in the old way of thinking. But either way, I wish she would be more flexible. After all, she was the one who requested to live together in the first place my mother-in-law soon stopped nagging me when my husband is around because my husband protects me every time. However, when my husband is away, she starts right away. Why do you let Tyler wash the dishes when he feeds you? I can't believe it! This is a rule that my husband and I decided together. Tyler can't cook, so I cook every day and Tyler does the dishes. When I say this, my mother-in-law looks disgusted. When I was young like you, we weren't allowed to do that. And after making such a bad dish, 
How dare you talk like that? You should ask him to do the dishes after you make better food. Seriously? I could just make her skip meals every day. I usually cooked with a light flavor. This is because my husband's health checkup results were not so good. And my mother in law is also old, so she should take care of her health. That's why I keep the seasoning light. So she had no reason to complain about it. If she didn't like it, she should have made it herself. And I still have other complaints about my mother in law. She spends too much money. She frequently buys new clothes and expensive luxury brand bags. I always frown when I see her matching the clothes she buys in front of the mirror. Did you buy clothes again? What? Are you complaining? It's not like you are paying for it. Tyler earns a lot of money. So that you can live a rich life like this, if you are jealous. I gave birth to him, so you should be more grateful. To say the truth, I wish you would use your money for me rather than playing around with it. I was horrified. My mother in law would spend it all in a heartbeat if I gave her my salary as it is. I would never do such a thing. Fortunately, I had already converted the bank book of my own account to an electronic one, so there was usually no need to worry about it being seen. The one for the shared account is hidden in my room. Still, it is hard for me not to tell the truth to my mother in law. In fact, if you compare my husband's earnings with me, mine are much higher. I work as an employee of a general company and I'm currently in the position of section manager. On top of that, on weekends, I make use of the certification I have and teach English online. I am a pretty popular teacher, if I do say so myself. So when I combine my income from working as a company employee and an English teacher, it's quite a lot. On the other hand, my husband used to work for a large company, but his job was too strenuous and he became mentally ill. As a result, he had to resign from his job and is currently looking for a new job while working part time. However, we have been living like that for about two years now. I think he's not planning to look for a full time job. When we moved in together, my husband told me. That he didn't want his mother to worry about him. He asked me not to tell his mother that he had resigned from his job due to a mental illness. He said that if she found out, she might go to his former company to yell at them. I'm sure that his mother, who loves his son very much, would do something like that. I did as my husband asked. And promised not to tell his mother about our income. However, she always says that my husband earns money to support me, when even her wasteful spending comes from my income. I don't understand why she treats me so poorly. Stress built up inside me little by little. Then one day, I received a call from a friend of mine. Who had not seen me for about six months because she was busy. I was happy to hear from her out of the blue. Hey, what's up? Oh, Mona, your husband hasn't found a new job yet, has he? No, he hasn't. Why are you talking about my husband? I was just driving through town on my way back from my client's place. I saw your husband. Walking arm in arm with a young girl. What? My mind went blank. My husband having an affair? That's impossible. We are a close couple. Even though we sometimes fight, my husband protects me from my mother in law and we have normal conversations at home. But I can't believe that he is having an affair. But 
I don't think my friend is jogging either, since I haven't heard from her in a while. And she is calling me during the day while working. She is not the kind of friend who would pull a prank like that. My mind was a jumble of feelings of wanting to believe my husband and feeling uneasy. I decided that I had no choice but to make things clear. So I asked the credit agency to conduct an investigation. I was really distressed for a few weeks until the results of the investigation came back. And that's the same time when my mother-in-law was being troublesome. Tyler, I want to go on an overseas trip. What? Overseas? Why all of a sudden? My friend's son gave her a trip to Europe to celebrate her 60th birthday. So I wanted to go on a trip to Europe for my birthday too. I see. You're turning 60 this year, huh? My husband crossed his arms and started thinking in front of me. No, no, it's not your problem. I'm the one paying for it, and I'm absolutely against it. I was thinking such a thing in my mind. I was distrustful of my husband, but as long as I, but as long as there was no evidence yet, I try not to talk about our income. Then my husband agreed to do it. I couldn't help but butt in. Wait, Tyler, don't just decide on that without asking me. A trip to Europe costs a lot of money, you know. I said in a slight panic. And as always, my mother-in-law started to attack me. What? I didn't ask you for anything. I'm asking Tyler. You don't bring money into the house, and you don't even do the housework. So don't interrupt me," she shouted, and then she continued. "You know, do you realize how much freedom Tyler gives you? He works for a big company and earns five thousand dollars a month. You were supposed to be at home and supporting your husband, who is doing the hard work and protecting the family. And yet, no matter how much I tell you." You keep getting cocky like that. I've had enough of this. You and Tyler need to get a divorce. My mother-in-law told me to divorce my husband. This surprised my husband as well as me. What are you talking about? Don't decide our divorce, Tyler. You were deceived by this woman. She's just using you for her own convenience. If you stay with her, you will be unhappy. So, break it off. Saying this, my mother-in-law pulled out the divorce papers from the drawer. My husband, who didn't think she had even prepared such a thing, was obviously surprised. Mom, come on! Why do you even have divorce papers ready? My husband apparently has no intention of divorcing me. At that time, I had a faint hope. I thought that the reason my husband did not want to divorce me was because he loved me, and that what my friend had seen was someone else. I wanted to believe that my husband was not having an affair, and that he was thinking of me and only me. I wanted to believe that, so I refused to sign the divorce papers, just as my husband had refused. However, my faint hopes soon went down the drain. I received a letter from the credit agency informing me of the result of their investigation. When I checked the contents, I found the number of photographs of my husband. It was obvious my husband was having an affair. I was shocked. At the same time, I was furious. I knew that my husband had been acting like a good husband at home, but behind my back, he was having a good time with a young woman. The woman he was having an affair with was a waitress at a cafe, where he worked part time. She was 24 years old, 10 years younger than my husband. 
I guess it was because she was so young that my love for my husband instantly disappeared. Then, around that time, my mother-in-law booked a trip to Europe. Of course, I had no intention of going, but my mother-in-law had a triumphant look on her face. Mona, you are staying at home, okay? He always spent too much of Tyler's money as much as you want, she said. I don't want to pay for the overseas trip of my husband, who is having an affair, and my mother-in-law who is a bully. So I whispered to my husband, You are going to have to use your own money this time. My husband got quite upset and whispered back, w Wait a minute, it's a married couple's business, so you'll have to pay for it. It seems that he intends to rely solely on me. Now, it was clear that my husband only sees me as a convenient housekeeper who earns money for him. I'm divorcing you. What? Why? Divorce? I had said this in a voice that even my mother-in-law could hear. And she brought me the divorce papers with a very happy look on her face. So, you finally decided to move out of this house. Isn't it great news, Tyler? Now, you won't have to throw your money down the drain. Tyler could not seem to tell the truth to his mother because he had kept it from her for so long. He signed the divorce papers under his joyful mother's prisons. I'll take it and file it at the office. I said as I packed up my belongings to leave. My mother-in-law grinned triumphantly and said, I want to help you even if you were in debt, and walked me out. My husband had his head down without saying a word. I went back to my parents' house, filled out my part of the divorce papers, had my parents sign the witness box, and submitted the divorce papers to the government office. Then, of course, I sent a content-satisfied letter through my lawyer to Tyler and the affair partner's workplace. I blocked his contact information, and he could not contact me even if he needed to. But instead, he came to my parents' house alone. I didn't want to see him, so my father handled it. Tyler insisted that he couldn't pay alimony. I, I guess he had not told his mother anything yet, seeing that she is, was not there. My father, my father turned Tyler away without question, so I never had to see his face. And he made him promise to pay me through my lawyer, even if it was in installments. But then, about three months later, this time, my ex-mother-in-law and my ex-husband came to my parents' house together. I was living at home at the recommendation of my parents, so I was there just when they came. Again, my father handled the situation first. My mother and I listened and watched. Then I heard my ex-mother-in-law screaming. Why have all the lifelines in our house stopped? Your daughter must have done something. She's not taking Tyler's salary, is she? I heard such a voice and I was impressed how this woman could be so confident. She never admits that her own son is at fault. And she just wants to make me the bad guy. I kind of felt sorry for my ex-mother-in-law and decided to show my face in front of the two of them. When my ex-mother-in-law noticed me, she widened her eyes and yelled at me. You finally showed your face. You put both Tyler and me in a lot of trouble. I don't know how you did it, but you gotta get the power and water back on. I didn't even get to go to Europe for my 60th birthday celebration because of you. I would like to calmly tell you that I am not in charge of paying utility bills and so on. After our divorce, I leave all that to Tyler. If the 
lifeline is stopped, it's because Tyler's salary isn't enough to pay it, isn't it? When I said this, my ex mother in law raised her voice. Why, are you stupid? Tyler works for a big company and earns $5,000 a month. How can he not be able to pay the bills? Apparently, Tyler hasn't told his mother after all. I showed her my tax slip to show her the reality. This is my income from my company, and this is my income from teaching English online. You. you teach English? My ex mother in law was clearly surprised. Then she took a close look at the withholding tax slip, and her eyes widened. Well, it looks like it's true that you receive about five thousand a month. Then, what about Tyler's salary? If it's the same as it was right before we broke up, he's a part timer at a cafe. I would say his take home pay is about six hundred a month. Six hundred? And since he has to pay the alimony for the affair, I bet he has very little money for living expenses. Right? A an affair? Why? Isn't Tyler a businessman working for a big company? My ex mother in law was about to collapse because the reality was so far away from what she thought it was. Tyler looked uncomfortable. M Mom, I'm sorry. I have been meaning to tell you. He apologized. Then she started to say something outrageous. Mona, I'm sorry. I said selfish things without knowing anything about you. I will reflect on what I said, so please come back. What in the world is this person talking about? How can you ask me to come back under the circumstances? I am already divorced from Tyler, so we are strangers. There's no reason for me to go back. And I'll still have to support you too, even if I did. Who would want to go back in that situation? If you stay here any longer, I will call the police. So please, leave as soon as possible. When I said this calmly, my ex mother in law and ex husband made a pathetic sound and left. Then I put a restraining order in place so that I could report my ex husband and ex mother in law if they appeared in front of me. As for the two after that, I sent the proof of the affair to the cafe. And people at work started giving Tyler the cold shoulder. He had no choice but to quit his job at the cafe with his partner. However, he had to pay for the alimony, so he is currently working several part time jobs. In the end, he is working as much as he did when he was mentally ill at his former company. It looks like his affair partner has left him, and he is now living with his mother. However, my ex mother in law is gradually showing symptoms of dementia. So he has to work hard to pay off his debts while also taking care of his mother. It served them right. On the other hand, I continue to live with my parents and save money at a very fast pace. In fact, I'm currently saving quite a bit of money. I am planning to invest in the near future to further increase my assets and aim to be semi retired in a few years. <laughs>